Good guys, I wanna see you breathing and I wanna hear you breathing. These are not relaxing breaths, these are not subtle breaths, these are warrior breaths. You're charging up. I just hit me on that breath. Yeah, I don't feel, I feel insane. So. You should do a whip it tonight. I'm not <laughs> doing a whip it tonight. This is zero percent. It's just. He out on the corner, he was dealing in drugs. Got himself a barber's chair and gave off some cuts. Now he's a podcaster. His life, he'll talk about it with us. And now it's Jeff FM. Get those headphones on. Can I not wear them? Um, you're gonna miss out on all the fun stuff Why? that they, we do. You put sound effects. Yeah, in? we got music and stuff. Right. It's a bit of a different yeah. type of podcast that we do. I know I you're. Like it. you're I it. already hear it. You're very intelligent, now. and you have so much wisdom that you want to share. And you were just sharing some with me outside, and I feel like we have so much in common. People wanted you on this show for a long time. Mm. Well, let me intro I you. I wish I got that set up, dude. You? you want one of those? You could switch. You want this? We can switch. Nah. <laughs> that's how and I really made, thought about it. Yeah, that's actually made for musicians. For a while. It's made for musicians so they could play instruments and also have their mic attached nah, to them. No, that would get, be it's right where the guitar would be. Let me intro you. We, <laughs> okay. don't, we don't usually do intros, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, today on the show we have Mike Posner. He just recently started a podcast. He's a Grammy Award winning no, or nominated artist. Nominated. nominated. That's cool. That's, Stay in integrity here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> So yeah, he just started his podcast and we were here at his house. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. So we're not in the Jeff FM studio, so we won't be able to do any pranks on you. Thank God. Um, normally we would do some wild stuff. I was thinking maybe we'd like just have a wild card. Somebody runs in and dumps an ice bucket on your head and does oh, the ice bucket challenge That's on you. fun. That's my kind of party. That ain't a prank. Because you love cold plunges. Yes. And you love doing tough challenges. You walked across America. Mm. You hiked Mount Everest. You mm. summited my, Mount Everest. Something that's on my bucket list. You run. You're extremely big on health and sprouts. And yes. now you're in our world, the podcast world. <laughs> you're on YouTube. I don't know if Your you even- challenge yet. <laughs> I don't know if you give a fuck about views or anything, because it seems like from what you said outside, you're like, you know what? I don't even care if people are like, watch it. I just want to put stuff out there. And, you know, it was just really, it's really nice. You just seem Thanks, like a real man. peaceful, good dude. So I'm happy to meet you. I'm happy to meet you too. Thanks for having me on. And, and yeah, man, the, the views and the success I think is, it's a byproduct of doing something meaningful. Yeah. You know, or something that adds value to someone else's life. And, uh, it's a nice byproduct. Don't get me wrong. You know, fame and success and money, all this nice stuff. Yeah. Uh, but you don't try not to do it for that reason. You know, don't make music to get fame. You get fame because you did really good music. That's what I was thinking early on in my life. I was like, I don't think I want to be famous unless I'm good at something, not just for no reason, like going yeah. to a reality show, <laughs> going to Jersey Shore or something. Right. Which I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of did that yeah, too. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. But look, it's, want- life is a learning lesson, you know? <laughs> But you also have songs out there that will live on forever, hit songs. That one that you got peer pressured into taking drugs that changed your brain for life. That one that's incredible. Yeah, I don't have anything like that. So I'm trying to find my, my you know, what's my number one hit song. You got videos, they'll live on. Yeah. Not, well, here's not the forever. thing, Jeff. This notion of things living on forever is actually wrong. I would challenge you on that. You think we're going to well, uh, civilization will end man. soon? Like, and lose when's it all? the last time you listened to a song that was made two thousand years ago? The, yeah, but they didn't. Ha- they don't have the technology to really. I get it, but you think people in two thousand years could be listening to my shit? I don't think so. If I died right now, is it is a number of people? I'd be really sad. My audience and obviously the people who really know yeah. me. Right, in a circle. I'd be sad. Right, but then all those people are gonna die eventually too. Uh huh. Everyone you know is gonna be dead, and sooner or later, everyone that remembers my name will be dead. Mm -hmm. That changes how you look at the notion of legacy, because when you take that into account, you have to ask a new question, which is not, "Am I gonna be remembered?" Because you, yeah, we're all gonna be remembered, but then we're gonna be forgotten, all of us. Do you fear death? Well, I'll answer you, but I'll just finish this point real quick. So now you ask a new question, which is, well, is what I'm doing right now meaningful to me? Does it give me joy now? Yeah. Does it make other people's experience of life right now more meaningful? 
less painful? Yeah. I think it's a better question. Do I fear death? Um, I've almost died twice. That's why I asked, because you know yeah. you've, you've been bit by that rattlesnake. What was the other time that you almost died? On Mount Everest. I camped too. There was a there was an avalanche that came close to us. And uh, those experiences were, were very different from one another. The first one, the rattlesnake, was actually quite peaceful. And the second one was just horrible. It was just really scary. And I'm scared of snakes. I'd rather take the avalanche. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not cocky enough to say like there's no version of death that could present itself right now that I wouldn't be freaked out by. You know, I, I feel like I have a lot more to offer. Mm -hmm. So I, I certainly don't want to die today or the next day because I just feel like there's so much more I can give. Do you have any other big um, challenges or anything on the horizon for you? Like you walked across America, mm -hmm. now you summited Mount Everest. What's left? It's never ending. And you, you know, you know, you pick a, a good goal if it destroys all your other goals. Meaning that when I finished walking across America, I didn't feel like I was at the end of something. I dove in the Pacific Ocean after walking six months and three days. Was it cold? 2,851 miles. It was cold, but I didn't really notice it. It's just so it was, alive. It felt like the first day of my life. Uh -huh. It didn't feel like the end of anything. It felt like the beginning. And so when you have a goal that's so big that the you set the goal and the current version of yourself can't do it. Mm -hmm. You go, if I, if I get there, if I achieve this goal, I will have to become a new man in the process. That's yeah. an exciting goal. And then God willing, you make it there. Now you look around and go, whoa, what else can I do? Yeah. And so that's, that's how Mount Everest happened because I did the walk first. So you're going to like go down and see the Titanic and the submarine <laughs> next? <laughs> nah, that doesn't call to me. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it, all that to say that it's unlimited. And so there's so much, there's so much I want to give a lot of it you know, is not physical. Those are the two big, like, athletic, physical things I wanted to do. What are you more proud of? Making I Took a Pill in Ibiza or Walking Across America? It's all one thing. You know, people don't understand that. It's like, I'm proud of being the, the motherfucker that got nominated for the Grammy yeah. and then decided to walk across the continent. Yeah, hell yeah. Who, like, who else would do that? Yeah. And I don't say that challenging the world. That's what I say to myself. Like, when I feel down or whatever, I go, who else would make that decision? Uh huh. And not just decide, but then do it. Yeah. And then almost die, almost lose your foot and finish. Yeah, you went back and did it. And then after you get in the water, then go, okay, now I'm going to climb the tallest mountain in the world. And then go do it. Like, so Fuck, I'm gonna, I gotta do that now. I'm proud of the whole arc. That's what I'm proud of. And more importantly than the, than the accomplishments is who I had to become to get them done. Yeah. And Would that, you do it again? Which one? Uh, either. Oh, either. I was like, who's <laughs> talking to me? God damn, I was like, like two of them. <laughs> It's uh, in your head. It's the sprouts. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> the shit. sprouts are talking to you. Yeah, the the walk across America. Would you do that again? I, I'm definitely gonna do that again. If, what you yeah. did it? Why you would you do it, it again? Backwards. That's exactly right. Yeah, I want to do it the opposite way. I just experienced what you're talking about. Last two weeks ago, I ran the LA Marathon, and my goal was 3:40. I crushed it. I just ran it at 3:28. Sick, bro. And then after. I, it was probably one of the most happiest moments of my life because I never thought I'd get my body to do that. And I'm in the peak physical condition. I'm 34, I'm only going downhill now. And I was like, why am I sad? You know, like I'm never gonna run faster than that. But I accomplished it, I got the medal. And I, I looked it up, it's called post-race blues. Mm. Once you accomplish this goal that you work so hard for, you now have to find another one. You know, there's always gotta be something that you're working towards. Like I thought my goal was just get a YouTube gold plaque, like when you hit a million subscribers. Yeah. And then you get that, and then you're like, well, I don't give a fuck about that anymore. I chainsawed it in half. Good for you. Now it's like, what's next, you know? Win a, a YouTube award, chainsaw that, fucking climb Mount Everest, Yeah. you know? That's what I gotta do next. There's a great line by my buddy, Sage Francis. He's an amazing poet. And uh, he won an award for his, for his poetry 
And in one of the lyrics of his songs, he goes, the next week I smashed the trophy at a show because it was taking up the space that I needed to grow. <laughs> and so that's what I'm hearing you say is you, you accomplish this thing, but there's an inappropriate way to deal with success. And that is to use the past success as an excuse to chill. Yeah. Mm. The appropriate thing to do with a success is to use it as fuel and go, hey, look, there's a challenge ahead of me. Maybe I put the challenge there or maybe life put the challenge there. But look at that shit I already did. I can do this too. We use that that thing in the past to fuel the future. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I'm hearing you did. So good on you. You did it too. You got bit by a rattlesnake. It put you in the hospital for what, six months? No, no. Uh, I was in the hospital five nights. Oh, five, five nights. nights. And then yeah, did the you whole, get straight? The whole walk took six months. Oh, so you, after mm -hmm. the hospital, you went right back out walking. No, I had to go home because I couldn't really walk yet. I was on crutches and they gave me a walker. And so I had to go home. Oh, so you went back home and chilled for a little bit so and, then, and then you flew back to the place? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so you got to do it again. Space. Technically, you're disqualified. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that one doesn't even count, bro. You got to do it again. He was doing start the, over you know, day one. How many miles is a marathon? 26.2. I read that he was doing 30 miles a day at one point. Were you? He was doing a marathon a day. Yeah, for most of the walk, I did 24, but you keep getting better at it. So but by you the were end, walking. Yeah, by the end, I'd do 30. Did you run some of it? Very rarely. But you're running now. You've been running consistently? Yeah, I love to run. Yeah, yeah. I, don't have, I don't have time to walk all day now. Do some other yeah. projects. So. Running is my meditation. That's where I get everything out. People ask me to run. I just, yeah. I'm like, nope, I gotta go by myself for this one. Yeah. I got the yeah. Garmin watch on. People, I see a friend, can't stop, bro. I'm, I got records to break. Yeah. I got a legacy yeah. to cement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready to stop. Hell yeah. 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 I like that one. Can I get that again? <laughs> mm hmm. I feel like I got like a jean jacket on now with no shirt on underneath. <laughs> yeah. One more time. Oh, wrong one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're just throwing in random shit, dude. <laughs> Those are Jeff's favorites. You know, that's, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Burn, 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 burn is my favorite, the siren. Yeah. Vine days. You, 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 that's why you love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very, like, it's very 2013. Tied to him. Yeah. It's very tied to him. Sound effect. He also loves the vine boom. So you wrote and produced the song Boyfriend for Justin Bieber, right? Mm -hmm. Co-wrote, co-produced. Okay. I worked on a Black Bear. And that song blew up. It was huge. I loved it. You know, I, I grew Thank up you. listening to 50 Cent, Get Richard Die Trying is my favorite album, but I, I loved that song, Boyfriend. I was embarrassed that I liked it. Yeah. Because it's not a, a song I, I should be liking. You know, if my you friends found out. Because a motherfucker that loved Get Richard Die Trying, me, wrote a pop song. And that's why you like it. Yeah. Wow. Maybe yeah. that's it. It is it, bro. For Damn, sure. But there's more to it. <laughs> that's not it. Sorry. <laughs> so I had a birthday party this one night at the nice guy. Justin comes up to me at the table. He sits down next to me. We know each other a little bit through friends. So we're talking and stuff. Then they're like, oh, let's go have an after party. So I wasn't prepared to have an after party, but everybody came back. Justin brought his whole entourage to my apartment now. And I got him and like 20 of his people there. I got no alcohol. I don't even have drinks to give people. I just, I was selling weed at the time, like heavily. I had pounds of weed. So I just threw Justin a pound of weed, just it smoked through the whole place. And then my friend Cody, who's a little out there, he's a little wacky. He goes, yo, Jeff, he puts on boyfriend and he's like, show him the dance. This is your favorite song. <laughs> and I was so- Were you there? No. Nah, he, he wasn't around back then. This was like, nine years ago or something but i was so embarrassed that he was like what's the dance bro show I, me i'm not showing no, it wasn't even a dance oh, it's, it, fans. it's just he fucking yeah he, he threw me under the bus there but that's another hit song did yeah, you do the you're dance? right maybe because you like get richard i try maybe you had it right the first time yeah. that's why i like it okay i'm a little mm -hmm. just Here's a question traumatized for you. by it top Get Rich or Die Trying song. Ah, uh, damn. Probably Many Men, but it's a little played out. Ah, uh, Many know? Men is crazy. Yeah. It's so good. Just a lot of fighters use it for their walkout song. Mine used to be Heat when the album came on. Yeah. Also, If I Can't. If I Can't. Uh -huh. Do it, baby, it can yeah. be done. I'm going to let the champagne bottle pop. I'm going to take it to the top. Show I'm going to make it hot, baby. Yeah. But now... 
I, Many Men is the one, man. Yeah. I think I didn't really understand that song when I was a teenager, but now being an adult. So, I also like wow. my buddy because it's a metaphor. You know, it sounds like he's talking about his buddy, he was talking about his gun. Yeah. I leave it on the I bench when I'm running to get album, my basketball. No. That's a G Unit song, isn't it? Yeah, I like a lot of G Unit stuff too. Yeah. That's that gets me fired up. Oh, you know, track. yeah, you, you know what else I like from G Unit? Mm. Eye for an eye. <laughs> I don't know that song. You, you don't know, know Eye for an Eye? Uh, what's the song I like by G Unit? We be I popping for, them things. That's another fire Every time one. we roll through. All the gangsters around know my whole crew. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what we supposed to? <laughs> you can front. Yeah, you want we be popping them things. Like yeah, eye Scott for Storch an eye. Beat. It goes uh, Eye for an eye. N word. Survive the shots <laughs> or die. N word. <laughs> I mean, you could just skip over. You don't have to say N word every time. <laughs> yeah, you did it in a in a more tasteful way than yeah, I did you just, it. Just, yeah. uh. <laughs> Was it in Detroit? Did uh like all your friends use that word growing up? <laughs> the black ones, not the white ones. Fuck no, bro. M Eminem never said it <laughs> in no, his life, bro. Right? Ooh, we got the shit beat out of us. I mean, I guess you want to be a white rapper, you can't be fucking doing that. Yeah, but other ones do. <laughs> other white rappers do. I don't know, man. Sure, Where, Machine Gun Kelly's throwing it around the house to Megan Fox. I don't think so. What's for dinner? N word. I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely no, I, not. I, I don't know where where I grew up. That was not cool. Yeah, that was not cool. You grew up in Detroit. I grew up in Southfield, so I was born in Detroit, and I grew up in a suburb of Detroit called Southfield. Where is Big Sean from? Big Sean's from Detroit. You met Big Sean. I was eighteen. And Sean and I are the same age, so we met. How old are you now? Thirty six. So eighteen years ago, I met Sean. He had he had met Kanye, knew Kanye, and Kanye was considering signing him to a record deal. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, he just changed my life because he, he basically made me a part of his crew. Yeah, and then it took him a few years, but he got a record deal, mm -hmm. and I didn't know we could do that. It expanded my belief in myself as to what was possible for my life just yeah. by him living his mm -hmm. i do if my buddy could do i'm like you know we're in the basement yeah. rapping to each other he's not like that much better than me or right? you know it's like yeah. i could do it too and once my belief changed in my mind it happened in my real life eight months later you know i was i found myself across the desk like like we are now, yeah. but Jay-Z was on the other side. Crazy. Yeah, and he offered me a record deal, and I got offers from a couple other labels while I was a student at college. This is when you were like 19? I think it was 1920. I have a very similar story that's like freakishly close to that. I would vacation down in Miami. I saw a barbershop that was opening up, and as I was like looking at the outside, there was all these pictures of celebrities and stuff and it was called Hall of Fame Barbershop. So I was like, this is incredible. Like this is my dream. And all we had in Staten Island was we had Wu-Tang, I told you before. They no, would, I told you. They, well, I, I knew I told about you, that. I told you they came in the shop. They used to come to get haircuts. No, you didn't tell me that. They would come, yeah. I, they, oh, yeah, yeah, they used to come in yeah, our yeah, barbershop sorry. to get haircuts. So that was like the first celebrities that I've ever seen. Now, Which ones, by the way? Raekwon, uh, Method you, Man. you have all... 17 affiliate members. <laughs> no, 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 no. All the same So time. yeah, Raekwon. Yeah, Raekwon Method Man. Meth Method Man I, I met a couple times. But yeah, those are the only celebrities that I've ever known and they were from Staten Island. So I didn't even realize how big yeah. Wu-Tang was. I thought it was just like a Staten Island thing, you know? Right. So I moved down to Miami. I'm working at the shop now. I followed up. I dropped everything I had going for me at that shop there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in this barber shop. I'm working there for maybe a month. And Amber Rose walks in and she's with her friend and she wants me to give her the same haircut as her and she has long hair. So I shave the girl's head and then I cut Amber's hair and I do like a design in it. We become friends and she posted me on Twitter. And this is before I was doing any social media stuff or anything, but I was like figuring out how to leverage social media mm -hmm. to grow my business and stuff. After that, maybe another month later, Big Sean tweeted out, I'm in Miami shooting a music video. Is there anybody that could give me a haircut? Amber like linked us. So I met Big Sean, cut his hair. And then I ended up going on tour with him, Mac Miller and Wiz Khalifa yeah, just to cut tour. their hair. It was just the craziest time. I was, I was 19, 20 and I felt like I made it. I was like, this is insane. I'm just on tour with these guys and all I got to do is give one haircut like every three days. <laughs> it was so much fun. And then that eventually led to, you know, other things. 
I didn't meet Jay Z and sign a deal or anything, <laughs> but it was. It's not it was, too late. <laughs> it's too late. I got no musical talent whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do a uh, podcast exclusively for Title yeah. or something. Is that <laughs> even a go. thing still? I don't know. Jay Z usually don't fail at anything. I don't. Yeah, he's got a pretty good batting average, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he could take one L if the Title thing didn't work out. It's just tough competition. Spotify, Apple Music. I thought Kanye was Title. Kanye was, I he think, got offered a title for Kanye got Life offered. He said in a song he got offered a certain amount of money from Apple Music, but mm -hmm. Jay Z was his boy, so he went with him uh, out of loyalty. And um, I think it Pablo, ended up right? fucking yeah. him on streams or whatever. I don't know. Like three months later, he was on all streaming yeah. platforms. I just say a lot of stuff. I was just excited you said something. I, dude, I've been thinking about the kumquat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like such a bad hypochondriac that I've just been like, am I having a fucking allergic reaction? I just keep feeling around in my mouth and my throat. And I'm like, I'm like, get more present. Listen, uh, I, good, was, I was worried good. about bringing him today because the last time we had a mic on the show, he cursed them out and yeah. the Mike flipped the table Which over. Mike? Mike Malak, the one that yeah, he went he on impulsive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he flipped the table What'd over. What'd you say to him? Man? I mean, it's, you know, we don't, we don't get along. <laughs> it was it was well, uh he could, he could get angry huh we made him angry apparently enough yeah. i think we made him the angriest he's ever been in his life Damn. and we captured it on camera he made me pretty angry and, and it was I live retaliated. that's mm. that's all you think we'll get there no damn <laughs> no all right. I, I was just like, I, like fox sprouts <laughs> dude, what, what, you what, you you say? what can we do to uh -uh. get him he's <laughs> like the nicest guy i've ever I met i know i was life. trying to think of jokes and i was like i can't interrupt this oh, i'm sure, I'm I, sure I there's how a, can we backhand him yeah. or like you know sure there's a button that, you the, could push the one was the cum quad when he came in he was like i gotta go change i got cum on my shirt yeah that's a Good one. Uh, pause. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's so nice out here. You got just trees with fruits on them that you don't even know what what it's they are. It's not bad. It's not bad. And you pluck a fruit off and eat it, and you're like, oh wow, I don't know I had these here. Yes, yeah, this is a good situation for it's sure. It's inspiring. Yeah. All right, real quick, today's episode is sponsored by Hymns. Your sex life is important, but your schedule is busy. You don't have enough time to go to the doctor's office to get treated for your erectile dysfunction? Through Hims, you can now get treated for ED without stepping foot outside your door. That's right, Hims is changing men's health care by providing access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to doctor trusted ED treatments, options such as chewable hard mints, brand name treatments like Viagra or generic alternatives for up to 95% cheaper. The process is simple and 100% online. No uncomfortable doctor visits. You just answer a series of questions on their site and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If prescribed, your medication ships to you for free, no insurance needed. If ED is getting you down, it's time to join the hundreds of thousands of trusted him subscribers and get treated. Start your free online visit at hymns.com slash jefffm. That's hymns.com. That's h-i-m-s dot com slash jefffm for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash jefffm. Hard mints are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Prices vary based on product and subscription plan. All right, now let's get back on with the episode. Do you have any advice for him, an aspiring comedian? At Listen, this point in his life, just, I don't know. I don't know uh, exactly where he's at in his career. Talk but, more, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Wait, that's the whole job. Yo, fuck this. But just, I'll go back to to you. But but just to piggyback on what you just said, you know, about one of my teachers was a a man named Ram Das. You ever heard of Ram Das? No. He was a beautiful man. He died died a few years ago. He's responsible for a lot of the Eastern teachings that we have in the U.S. now coming over. He brought them in the late like, 60s. Like what? Oh, dude, just like yoga, Buddhism. Like these things weren't really present in American culture in the 50s and yeah. early 60s. And so he was one of the people. Even that, when I was growing up, if I was doing yoga, I would get fucking yeah, so beat up. I get jumped. It's continued to grow, but like he was one of the first, not the only one of the first to, to bring things over. Anyways, he has a great quote. And he says, we're all just walking each other home. We're all just walking each other home. If you can do something in your life, you know, sometimes you're either on top of life or life's on top of you, you know? And so if you're, if you're in a position where you're on top of life and you can, you can help somebody else on their journey, you should. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't really think of anything more important to do. You know, there's other things to do. 
you know, you and me, we train, we run our business. We, it's all important, but is any of it more important than walking somebody else home, helping them on their experience of life? And so if we can use our platforms, our shows, whatever to do that, then we should, man. And, and that's like, it's worth more than any check. Yeah. It's worth more than any check. We so, were saying outside. What's your problem? <laughs> 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 hmm. Biggest problem right now. You'd like to have more money, maybe? Yeah, sure. You want to I be mean, paid more? You, but this I'm is not, a time to negotiate. I'm not that material. <laughs> not that materialistic. My biggest problem. I want to. I, I sometimes I hate when I like think of what I want to do and then I start to do it and then I'm like, man, this isn't what I pictured in my head and I got to learn how to let go of those two things. You know what I mean? Nah. Right. So are you saying that you <laughs> are you saying that you are you saying you start things and you give up too soon? Kind of. I'm saying like the vision in my head is like, okay, this is what I wanted to be, and I get so tied to that. And then when I go to make the thing, I'm like, oh, this isn't what I had in my head. This isn't. You so know you get mean? too attached to a it coming out exactly the way you have it planned, right? And rather than allowing it to grow into something that may even be more beautiful. I kind of just stop it. You and quit. Like, I don't want to do you this. You quit. Yeah. yeah. Back out. Yeah. It's too hard. I get it. I get it. You like control. When's the last yeah. time you did a cold plunge? Like four days ago. <laughs> Should I already Sorry, hit three today? This morning. <laughs> three I did it this today. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> you're full of shit. Do you have bro. a cold plunge at your house? <laughs> Fuck Do you yeah. have one here? Of course. So you're Wim Hof certified. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You just went out there and breathed with Wim and he. <laughs> I trained with Wim twice and I went through, they have a teacher certification program that I went through. It was 20 weeks online and then four days in Poland. Is so it true? You just learn, learn a lot of science, how to teach it. It's, it's the 40 it. deep breaths? Yeah, basically. And you get high, right? Yeah, you take like 30 to 40 deep breaths and then we after an exhale, we do what's called a retention. Can we do one now on the pod? Yeah. Oh, nice, I was starting. And breathe into the mic. Don't hide that breath. Let them hear it. All of the listeners do this at home or in your cars driving to work. Yeah, can you guys give me some peaceful music? <laughs> nice, you're in this your is car, great. Close your eyes and just... This is my favorite okay. podcast we've no, ever that's done. That's a really important point. If you're in your car, do not do this, actually. <laughs> oh, um, that's a good point. Yeah, because there's a slight chance we're going to really like over-oxygenate. You could pass out. You could pass out. So this is a no-no for in the car and it's a no-no if you're in or near water. You know, a lot of people... Mm. What happens is... <laughs> <laughs> when we do this, the breath holds naturally get longer. So people get excited and they go, oh, I'm going to go underwater and do this. And their people have died from, from fucking around with that. Really? So it's serious. This is only to be done if you're in a safe place, sitting or lying Sit down. Sit down, yeah. Um, and usually we do this lying down, we'll do it sitting here. And we'll just do one round. But if we were doing a full practice, like, you know, I do this with professional sports teams. I work with the San Francisco 49ers, the Duke men's basketball. We'll do this three to five, maybe even six rounds. And it can become psychedelic. It makes all your problems go away. Just For breathing. sure. I mean, and what, what Wim says is you're getting high in your own supply. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful technique. Another great thing is, you know, I use psychedelics sometimes. Yeah. You ever do whippets? No. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like the same feeling. I don't know if that's true. It seems like it wouldn't be. Your brain's like I'll take your word for it. And you're just like super <laughs> fucking and it it kind of feels like the Wim Hof method. It's you should a, do a whip it tonight. I'm not <laughs> doing a whip it tonight. There's a zero percent chance. It's just there. Oh no, it's uh, it's not yeah. it. It's not and it. I'm gonna go ahead. I'll I'll go ahead and probably say I'll never do a whip it in my life. I brought up psychedelics because the thing about psychedelic, you take a dose of it, you can't untake it, Yeah. right? But the, the breathing, one of the cool features of it is if you ever want more, you breathe harder and deeper. And if you if it's too much, you just slow down. Mm -hmm. You're in control, you're in control of the experience. So um, we can do a round now. You wanna do a yeah. round now? Yeah. And I'll guide you, but okay. bear that in mind, you're in control of your experience. Okay. So a few things that might come up, you might feel some tingling in your body. Mm -hmm. You might have temperature change. You might get hot or cold. Feel really good. You may feel really good. You may get some cramping. Sometimes people's hands lock up like this. That's totally normal. It'll go away. It's called tet tetany. Um, we call it T-Rex hands. Uh, 
damn. Probably won't, like, Pro yeah, like probably got, won't happen. Like when him. fighters get knocked out. And you're like, it's a little bit like that. Uh, it probably won't happen in one round. Um, and you may have emotional releases. So uh, uh, if you start crying, <laughs> I'm going to be so excited. I'd be Ryan, so happy. Please take it serious. I don't know. Yeah. I am. You want to make fun of this. I'm not. Don't disrespect the man I'm in his home. Not. No, he's not. He's not. He's in. Kyle yeah. playing Joe Rogan saying this isn't real. He's in. Did you hear that sound bite? <laughs> Joe Rogan. No. Chimed in. Joe Rogan that said that. Say it again, Joe. <laughs> did you do this with the 49ers before the Super Bowl? I did this with them the last two off seasons. Um, so before the season started. I was about to blame you for the loss. <laughs> no, you can't blame me. You can blame me for them getting in the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, no, but, uh, it was actually really beautiful, really beautiful yeah. to see guys, you know. Um, and the things that I just described, all those happen, and they happen every session. So it's the cool thing about the breath work is uh, it it works even if you don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you follow the directions. So um, I'm gonna ask you guys to close your eyes um, and keep my keep my beautiful music going before we even start just feeling into the body see if you can feel your pulse in your hands see if, you, see if you can feel your heartbeat anywhere in your hands like with touching my hands or just no 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 just okay. leave your hands down you want to start an activity on your no garment? no no my, i was just checking my heart rate it's at 58 <laughs> right now okay it'll it'll when we do the retention so we're going to do the the deep breaths and your heart rate will go up once we go into the retention, your heart rate will, will drop. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you'll be able to see that later on your I want to see, yeah, I want to see it drop down to 50. That'd be crazy. But, I'd feel like an, an elite you, athlete. I'll have you not look at it while we're doing it. Gotcha. Just, just have the experience. Yeah. If I pass out, I haven't eaten today. That's why. So just. Oh, even better. It's best on an empty stomach. Okay, so even cool. better. Um, okay, so close your eyes. And I'll have you take a deep breath and fill up your belly and your chest. <sighs> Let it go. Belly, chest. Let it go. Belly, chest. Let it go. Belly, chest. Let it go. Charge it up. Let it go. Charge it up. Let it go. Good, guys. I want to see you breathing and I want to hear you breathing. These are not relaxing breaths. These are not subtle breaths. These are warrior breaths. You're charging up. Feel the energy moving up the spine into the head and letting it go. Charge it up. Yeah. Belly, chest. Letting go. Fully in. Good. Beautiful work. Keep it on. Charge it up. Yep. Good work. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. 20 more. Letting go. Charge it up. Let him go. Fifteen. Let him go. Thirteen. Let him go. Ten more breaths. Keep it going. Five. All the way up. Fill it up. The belly and the chest. Two. Let it go. One. Let it go. One more breath together. Let it go. Let it out. It just hit me on that breath. Yeah, Let it feel, out. I feel insane. It wasn't working until that last one. Now take one more breath in together. Now let it out and block. You're going to stop breathing now. After the exhale, stop breathing. I'm high as fuck, dog. Just enjoy the experience. Pretty fucking good. Ah, ah. Mm -mm. Oh. Mm. And let your body do what it's capable of doing. Your body can now go without oxygen for minutes. I don't need to breathe anymore. Yeah. I feel it in my hands like really bad. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. And no need to Tingles. force it. If you need to take a breath, you can, but, but you're okay. And when you take that breath in, go ahead and we'll take a breath in now. And we'll hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Let it go. <sighs> and before you open your eyes or keep the eyes closed, just allow some gratitude to move into your heart. Gratitude for where you are, who helped you to get here. Gratitude for our friends, our family, our fathers, our mothers. And lastly, gratitude for yourself. You're right where you're supposed to be. All the challenges that have been given to you in your life were happening for you to prepare you for what's next. You're perfect whole and complete. And life has your back. <laughs> you can open your eyes, Jeff, when you're ready. I didn't breathe it the whole time after that second breath you gave us. Breaking the rules, Jeff. I like it. I just didn't feel like I needed to. Your buddy needs a hug from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you hit yeah. a soft spot. Take the, no, take the headphone off and give him a real one. Heart to heart. Yeah, give him a real one. You got to put your heart. Came on to make dick jokes, bro. <laughs> Damn, I, I never know if you're fucking, if you're joking or what. what you think I'm joking? No, no. <laughs> I don't want to start. I don't yeah. want Mike to flip the table. This is why the table flipped. Mm. It came from his father passed away mm. about a month ago, two months ago. Two months, three, two and a half. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. But Mike's dog passed away and they got into a, a battle over, you <laughs> no. know, who was, uh, who it was just bad. and Suffering and, yeah. wars. And then, then he called him some names after and it just got a little out of hand. It was much mm. different than this episode. It's probably the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you what came up for you. During that, yeah, my dad. Yeah, before you, you said even the fathers grateful for our fathers, I was like, damn it. <laughs> I knew I opened my eyes and peeked at him for a second during yeah. that because I just I felt something over there, and then I saw him crying, and I was like, is that is he doing a fucking bit right now? I hope he's not because he deals no. with his pain with humor as we yeah well, well, like a lot of us do. So in the beginning, he was dealing with uh, the, he was coping by making jokes about it. Like he would ask, he would be out in a club and he'd be like hey can you take a picture of us my dad just died and like it's a crazy sick joke but he's uh, i mean comedians are dark you know you gotta have some pain you i gotta, just yeah that's the, how he would laugh yeah so he, would, he I'm, would i laugh. make the jokes that i know he'd be comfortable with yeah. so you know what i mean you know all of us especially as men mm -hmm. you know we, we deal with our pain different ways but a lot of it a lot of our ways don't include actually letting it out or actually feeling it. I cry a lot. <laughs> it's 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 you. it's so rare that doing a podcast, I'll just kind of let go like that because mm -hmm. I always want to be in control of everything. Yeah, like we always have moving parts. Like maybe a prank's gonna happen later on. I'm thinking about setting up and the timing and all that. But that was nice to just be doing a podcast and just completely just open to. Mm. You know, whatever. Somebody could have came in and side wrapped me, knocked me out right now. You know, my guard's down, but I was fine with it. I was high off yeah. oxygen, breathing. Why wasn't gonna let nobody side rack you? Well, you know, <laughs> one of these guys over there. This one looks like he's got a good shot on him. <laughs> you know. Let me ask you what it, uh, it came up for you, physically or emotionally. Oh, it reminded me of doing whippets. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it, it felt like it felt like a whippet. Like you don't have to go buy those things. Just breathe. You don't have to go do whippets. I swear, it feels like whippets. Correct. I believe you. I believe you. But only, I don't that's think just whippets like one... are very, very good for us. Yeah. Though. Yeah. This is natural. Yeah. There's there's ten to fifteen published studies on 
yeah. this breathing technique and I, its health benefits. I took mushrooms last night and I went to the Sphere in Las Vegas, the new Sphere. You did a lot last night. Yeah. And it was the craziest experience I've ever had in my, no, not in my, probably. What'd you see? Was it you, not you too, right? No, it wasn't you too. It was this documentary about space and life. And it's just crazy because it's, yeah. I was just proud of humanity for inventing it. At, when I was in there, I was like, yeah. this is so insane. <laughs> I'm seeing clearer in here. Maybe it was the drugs, but I only took a little cube of those chocolates, like the microdose. Yeah. The girl I was with ate a whole bar. How so many she was yeah. talking. Fucking, I don't even know. I just get the ones like, yeah. you know, the nice looking chocolates. Okay. They're, they're packaged up nice. You be careful with them chocolates, dude. Oh, probably close to a gram. I mean, I, I only took no one. Sprouts. And I, just sprouts and go to the sphere. No, I just like uh, the the. I, I I like mushrooms, but I just I'm always sketched out like if it's a bar and I don't know how much is in it. Like I'll uh, do mushrooms like once a year. I don't do them often, but for the sphere, I want to know exactly like, how much is I'm taking. You know? I wish I would have did that breathing exercise in the sphere while on mushrooms. Yeah. That would have been. If you know what I'm talking about, right? The sphere. Yeah. Like, so I haven't been yet, but I, I certainly would like to. Yeah, you can't put into words like what it's like. You just got to go and see it. I, I suggest everybody go see it if you can afford it. What it are was, you fucking like a investor? In no, the bro. I just, had, <laughs> I just had so much fun, and I don't know if it was like because we were gonna go to. I was gonna take the girl to Disneyland, and then I was like, "Do you want to go to Disneyland, or do you want to go to the sphere and take mushrooms?" And then this is the yeah, girl that I just started dating better. from the Bachelor show I was telling you about. Mm. So we're just getting to know each other. We did a four hour road trip and we took mushrooms and went to the sphere. And then the next day we drove back. It was great. It was mm. just, I'm just like, ha I'm happy from how this weekend went. I'm you happy know? for you too, man. Thanks, That's man. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a yeah. good time. Sorry, you're over there crying. I'm, I'm on the top you, of the world, yeah, bro. No, no. <laughs> I'm killing it did right now. Did you see the color when you did it? You, color? That, yeah, I got like a when, color. When you were breathing? Yeah. What'd you see? I got just light blue. But mm. it's probably just the lights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Some people see like uh, fractal work or sacred geometry at times. Mm -hmm. I, I usually don't experience that. It's more emotional for me. But yeah, other people see color for sure. Or it's sometimes images. You see kind of scenes and stuff. People sometimes say they have loved ones that have passed on come to them or communicate with them. It's like activating the DMT in your brain. I don't know exactly. What have you ever done DMT? No. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I haven't done drugs like that. He has. He did DMT. Maybe what that's that what like? It, uh, yeah, most insane thing <laughs> I've ever done. It's like going to the sphere on mushrooms. <laughs> yeah? yeah? So I don't even need to do DMT. <laughs> it's like the same. It's like the same thing. When you look back on the DMT in the scheme of your life, that it was... I always say to people, it's not a negative or like a positive experience. I just was like, it was an experience. I don't recommend it and I don't not recommend it. Yeah. Sometimes got you got to see things from a, a different perspective and sometimes that requires substances. But like DMT is like, it's not like, I'm going to sound like Joe Rogan, but it's like, it's most drugs you take and you're like, I'm still here and I'm high on the drug. DMT, you're just like completely gone. Like yeah. You're, there's, you, you don't remember your I don't want to try that. You're, you're gone. Yeah. yeah. There's no you anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. It's insane. Ayahuasca. Yeah. Do you, have you ever tried that? Once. Yeah. Do you, Similar? do you, uh, would you recommend it to Young a friend? <laughs> <laughs> recommend it to the kids, yeah. children. <laughs> <laughs> that one was tough, man. It was, it was like nothing. At no point was I having fun. You know? Yeah. And I think it, it helped me make some tough decisions I had to make in my life and, and really like just grabbed me by the neck, back of the neck and shoved my face into my character flaws. Mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, this thing you don't want to look at, look at it, motherfucker. And so it was pretty painful, but I think it was a net positive. You wouldn't do not it again. Fun. Not yeah. fun. I wouldn't say I would never do it again, but it's not something I would do like, one, <laughs> you know, regularly or anything like that. Psychedelics can be, um, can be good, you know, if used like with intention. Mm -hmm. But my greatest teachers in life the things that have changed my life the most have not been psychedelics they've been you know to just put it frankly pain and, mm -hmm. and facing pain straight on because if you really want to look where to grow like wh where where can i really change things and get to the next level in my life 
Just look at where your life hurts. Look at where your life hurts. And life is telling you right now. Like you don't need to take a drug or ask a guru or a therapist. Life itself is telling you right here. Look at it. And if you have the courage to go, okay, why does this hurt? And what am I supposed to learn from this? Mm -hmm. If you answer that question, what am I supposed to learn? And then you go on the journey to learn it. Embrace the pain. That will change your life more than anything else. Yeah, I agree. I'm most happy in my most or my my best memories are my most uncomfortable, painful moments. It's weird. Mm -hmm. And I always try to like when I'm going through that pain, if I feel a loss or something that I really try to feel those emotions because even though it's a negative one and it's really painful, you're still alive and you still get to feel. So you just like, I appreciate that. And I like, I take all that in too, you know? Yeah. And then sometimes it turns into f fuel for revenge and like, yeah. I want to go do this something. This is what we were talking about uh -huh. before. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it'll turn into that. But sometimes it goes away, you know, I don't, I don't know. So I, I think like it's even deeper, like it's beautiful to, to go, Hey, I'm feeling pain, which is a signal I'm alive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm grateful I'm still alive. That's, that's fucking great. But I, I believe that the pain is even, it's even deeper. Like I believe the pain is, is from life. It's from the universe just for you to point you in a certain direction. Yeah, sometimes you need a course correction. For Correct. me, it was an excavator that did it. Correct. I needed it to get smacked back on Correct. track. You weren't supposed to go that way, you know? Yeah. That was and God driving that excavator. <laughs> no, it was not. It was the <laughs> devil, but. Oh, sorry well, my, my perspective, which you're not asking me, but I'm gonna tell you on that accident is you're not done getting the lesson from that. You've gotten some of it. Oh yeah, I'm sure that'll. But the, but I'll, I'll live with it for life. No, there's even more juice on that bone from that day. Yeah. You. Oh yeah, there's a lot of juice in that bone. And, and I th we're talking about two different kinds of juice. <laughs> you know, right, right now, it, it gave you a gift. It, it changed your your life, your trajectory, and your work. Yeah. It sounds like it gave you better friends. Better friends. It gave you an immense amount of fuel, mm -hmm. which you've used in a positive way to change your you know take your health to a next level take your work to the next level and you, and you it made me a different person i've been vulnerable on the internet and that's correct. i think what is a lot different uh from other like creators podcasters a lot of people don't like to share too much about themselves in that i had to i had no choice you know it's on video everything so yeah i was crying on the internet too like this little punk fucking over here mm -hmm. I'm kidding. I cry too, you know? Yeah. It sounds like it shook the foundations of you. You know, change how you look. Uh -huh. change, you can see. Yeah. Right? I used to look so. like you. They used to, everybody would say, like, you look like Mike Posner. I was like, who is this guy? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> but I think the juice left in that lesson is what I told you outside, is forgiveness. Yeah. When you get to the point where that person who was driving the excavator where you go, hey, I don't like what you did, but I love you and I wish you the best. When you get there, you should that's just become left. a therapist. I'm just a friend, bro. Well, you're like a, now with the podcast, you could be like free online therapy for everyone because it's <laughs> it's free to watch the podcast. You just have to listen to a couple ads. That's what I love about it, and it can reach endless amounts of people. Just being on the internet, you know, that's a beautiful thing. So keep going that's your thing right keep going keep going dude yeah keep going keep going let's talk about cold plunges i want to <laughs> I, I know people are fucking like it's such like an influencer <sighs> thing to do for you and me it's different because it's it's like we lifestyle. do it because yeah it's a lifestyle <laughs> yeah is that part of the wim hof uh like experience is that where you got into it i had an affinity for cold water before i knew or heard of wim but uh, yeah, I learned a lot of the science and how to how to coach other people to do it. Was him. your first one tough where you're like, I can't go in that. It's cold. It's too cold. I've had a bunch of experiences like that. And, um, and maybe you, you've experienced this as well, where, you know, my tub is, you know, it's 39 degrees, right? <laughs> so impressive. I go travel, right? Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm on the road for a week, two weeks, three weeks. You go to a spot. When, when mm -hmm. I... No, because sometimes I just yeah, won't, what was this, I won't get one. 46 degrees is weak shit. No, sometimes I won't get one. You know, if I'm on the yeah. road, depending where I am. And I'll come home 
in that first one back. It's and tough. My yeah. yeah, it's cold, You build bro. up a tolerance to it. You definitely do. If you do yeah. them a lot, it's a lot easier to get yeah, through. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but, but you do get to a point where you you crave it. Yeah, and I have days leave. where I'll go drive to the place. I, I don't want one at my house because I'll get in and get out. I like that I go to a place and I pay the people mm. for it. So like, I'm not going to go in for a minute and waste yeah, that money. The and they also hold me accountable. Like, mm. I don't want to be embarrassed, like getting out. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll like jump in there. But sometimes I'll wait in my car for like 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. I'll Same. be like fucking, ah. Yeah, I'll be looking at that tub like, oh, maybe I get something to eat first. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to a point in my life where I just started saying, fuck it. And I just go and and like, I'll, the cold, like I'll be in the shower mm. and I'm just like, ah. I got to go do a podcast. I got to wake my brain up and I just fucking turn it as cold as possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but I just feel so alive. In a study where people are in 50 degree water and I believe they're only in there for two minutes, their dopamine increased 200% and their neuroepinephrine, which is something you can find in ADHD medication and, and antidepressants, increased 530%. <sighs> Which, you know, it's not surprising to you and I because we feel it. Yeah. That's why we do it. But there's this natural, A, mood elevation, and then B, focusing effect. Like you said, wake your brain up. That has been proven in this study that happens when we uh, expose ourselves to, to cold water. That's not the only health benefit, but it's, it's one of them and it's real. And um, we certainly have, you know, this hasn't been proven categorically in a longitudinal study with a large sample size but there's certainly like plenty of anecdotal stories of people i know that have cured that cured their depression with breathing and cold water mm -hmm. i believe it yeah it definitely helped me i hit a serious depression after the accident i was i just picked up all this stuff i even do hyperbaric chamber it's good for oxygen you. yeah you know it's Whatever, it could be a scam. They're just putting me in a tank and I'm breathing regular air, but I'm doing it, trying it. But I definitely do feel the effects of- Oh, that H-Bot is good, man. Yeah, the yeah, doctors swear by it and stuff. So I, I, I keep doing it, I still do them. But you did something that I really wanted to do this past season and already passed the Antarctica, Antarctica season. You have mm -hmm. to go in like the winter for the, or the summer because it's too- cold or whatever in the winter so you went and you jumped in the ocean where it's 27 degrees because it normally water would freeze at 32 degrees but since it's salt water it's the coldest possible cold plunge you could do yeah. you did yeah yeah, yeah 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 and it yeah. just it was like pins and needles just it was it, cold man for sure <laughs> yeah yeah how long did you stay in that i can't remember it was a couple minutes they had had me tied to a rope you know oh yeah and it was on like a cruise ship you yeah know? and every everyone was doing it yeah you know some people were longer than others but yeah i don't know it's in there a couple minutes damn you must Not have crazy. felt so alive when you first jumped in right i remember i was really tired that day i think i told you like i didn't sleep the night before that's, which that's always better than coffee your... that's better than yeah. any monster energy drink and nothing can be just jumping in I cold agree. water I agree. Good for a hangover. I know neither of you. Yeah. No, but yeah. Yeah. A lot of people that have <laughs> alcohol problems, like functioning alcoholics, will have a sauna and a cold plunge in their house so they could just wake up, get it out of their system, mm. you know, and then mm. go to work and, you know, I don't drink. still manage. A couple of things I'm playing with is one, doing it right when I wake up. The theory is like that spikes your cortisol at the right time and regulates your sleep. So mm -hmm. you get tired at the right time later in the day. So we're playing with that. And the other thing is right after I eat, you know, like I'll, I typically eat like twice a day. So that first meal I'll have 10 or 11 and you know, after you eat, even if you eat good stuff, so I, I, I only eat twice so I, and I train, so I eat a lot mm. and I'll kind of like feel a little tired. I'm toying with like just getting in the cold water for a little bit right after that and I feel like good after. I use it as like a pre-workout too. Um, so you do it before. Yeah, I, I, cause it just like, I want to warm my body up. And if you go back into warmth, you you know you, you you're losing out on a lot of the benefits because your body's supposed to warm itself back up naturally right, right and that's where you burn the calories all that extra benefits all the stuff they talk about but um yeah sometimes i'll just take off running and i'll just go run like 10 miles after a cold plunge and then you're not cold after the first mile right yeah right all right i gotta try that next so um next antarctica that's it that's a dream of mine i'm i'm big into marine life <laughs> i uh i sent the boys all uh uh, 
a brief last night. I sent them a video about seahorses because yeah. it's my new. I was big into orcas like six months ago because okay. they're insane. You know about orcas, right? Mm -mm. They're the apex predators of the sea. Great white sharks fucking don't stand a chance. Different weight class. Stay down there, great white sharks. The orcas, they'll tear their livers out and just leave their bodies. Okay. Like the killer whales. Orcas, they team up together. Yeah, the killer whales. They talk to each other and plan attacks. So they go in like a pod and they're all moving. And it's just, orcas, I was, I, I did so a deep, fired up, deep dive on. <laughs> but last night I saw this video on seahorses and I'm like, what the fuck is this thing? Did it evolve from a whole, like, did, it, did that, you know how we like, we were once in the ocean and then we yeah. walked out and then we became this other thing. Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Or is it just, can you believe in evolution and believe in God? Yeah, for okay. sure. All right. Cause somebody asked me they were like I do. Oh, all right good i do too then cool. I, <laughs> nice, bro. whatever you say bro. did we just start a cult <laughs> <laughs> yeah we did <laughs> yeah so at first i was like i asked this to uh the girl i was with i was like do, do you think seahorses evolved into horses because they have that horse head <laughs> okay and she was like no you need to see like the actual the hold on i have so facts written down yeah so i'm well, more she had already done this deep dive yeah they uh sounds like this was a real turning point in your guys relationship yeah yeah so sharks great white sharks <laughs> kill rate when they attempt to kill and get food whatever 50 percent okay seahorses 98 percent success what? They're rate killers yeah they fucking kill what fish they they kill and their fish. head moves so fast that like if you see if you're watching one of them and you see like a little fish go by mm. the fish just disappears the human eye can't even see how fast the seahorse grabs the fucking fish and how eats big it. is a seahorse some of them are like that big some of them get to like 30 inches okay but or 30 centimeters I, I, I just watched it last night. I, was, I, was, I smoked, like, a little, smoked a little weed. Like Jeff's doing that shit about seahorses. Again, uh, listen, man. they don't know shit about seahorses, but I, I sent you the videos and I told you guys to watch it. It was part of your homework. It's so, actually stopped right also, at the killing uh, part. The also, wait, this is another huge one because they take little pieces from each different animal. Like they have a uh, head of a horse. They have chameleon eyes so they can move one eye and look over there sort of like me you know like one <laughs> eyes could fucking so they look all at their surroundings okay and the men have the babies what yeah they right, have yeah. a kangaroo pouch no and they have they have yeah the men have <laughs> the, the babies well, so they could like uh slowly provide nutrition to the babies in the belly too as a male so like they could feed the babies and carry the babies at the same time yeah, Kyle. Hell yeah. You watch that babies. fucking... Did you smoke weed when you watch that? Yeah, I actually did. Nice. <laughs> they yeah. have the babies? Yeah, yeah. they have the babies. Well, wouldn't that, that just the, make the, them the females? No, no. The females, no. no. They, it's made it's in reversed. the female. And then the female's like, all right, your turn. You hold the rest of the pregnancy. So they shoot the eggs into the male's pouch, the male's kangaroo pouch. So Seahorse got this, this horse head... Uh, chameleon eyes, kangaroo pouch, and then they're just the men are pumping out the babies. They <laughs> actually like, give so birth. The, 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 the males actually give birth to the baby. Yeah, yeah. and only five percent of them survive. Ninety-five okay. percent of them die. Those babies. That's Imagine that happened to humans. Imagine ninety-five percent of humans when they're born they die. Like that's crazy. That's why this seahorse is so special. Only well, five percent make imagine it. Imagine when you, if you, the woman gives birth, she busts out like eighty babies, <laughs> oh, yeah, that, and, and then seventy-seven of them die. Bro. I only wanted so three. Crazy. That's good. I'm good. It's all right. It's all right. That's, yeah. That'd be so insane, yeah. bro. Yeah. Oh my god. Man, I can't wait to come across a fucking seahorse in real life. I'm gonna try to fucking grab it. And they got this exoskeleton that like. He wants to be an apex predator. That's what it is. <laughs> Bro, when you get I'm older, you get in. grab it. <laughs> then what? Like, I want you, how tough are you now? I'm not scared of you. It's all a game. How do you want to kill it? I don't want to kill it. It's all a game, Riggs. No, it won't kill them. They're, they're, the build of their exoskeleton was actually copied by um, engineers to build structures and stuff so they mm. don't break. Like, it's just... It, I don't That's know. Life's crazy, bro. They're considered yeah. to have like, one of the most insane like biologies like on the planet. Like, bro, that's nuts. There's got to be somebody that making these nuts. things. Like, there has to be a god that's making these things. You know? Yeah. There, there's yeah. so many like insane things that are in the ocean. That's where the aliens are. I think those are the fucking aliens. Oh, he's got it. Look at that's up. an alien. If you watch like yeah. Rick and Morty, they the aliens look like this shit that's in the yeah. ocean. Yeah, I agree. 
the deeper you go into nature and even in, internally to the human body and just see how complex and just impossibly Literally, these motherfuckers, they light, they got light up. They got lights in them. Where are they charging that? Where are they getting that is electricity from? Is that from? big pouch, the baby? Mm -hmm. Bioluminescence. Where they keep it. It's like a glowing light that's yeah. in, just in the water. They don't even yeah, have I've been fins. in those bioluminescent waters before. You ever been in those? No, you have? Yeah. And you just hit, hit the water and it lights up? up? Yep. Wow. Damn, it's like yep. you're swimming in a glow stick. <laughs> Where was that? I did it once in Jamaica. It was in LA once. Yeah, like, 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 certain like, time. like Laguna, Laguna Beach, I think. Oh. Yeah. How does it happen? It's a, like a bacteria they're or something? All, yeah, they're all little like plankton or bacteria. And when you move, they... Where are they up. charging up to I, get that light? I don't sun. know. I don't know. You're, oh, the you're, sun you're asking me for too much information. Or the man. moon. I, yeah, I'm, just, not, <laughs> I'm just a nice Jewish boy. I'm not a marine biologist. <laughs> That's another thing that you said to me that was interesting. You go to a Christian church, but you're Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? I'm Jewish ethnically, right? Mm. So I don't really practice. Um, but I have a direct relationship with God. I believe in God. And um, in that church, they play really great music. And there's a bunch of people worshiping God. Yeah. And if it lights me up, fills me up. Yeah. So I go there because it makes me feel good and, and it, it makes me a better person. There's no gospels in like, um, what's it called? Synagogues? There are, there are, and there's some good, there's, there's some great Jewish songs, but I would, I have to say as a whole, I think the Christians went out on the music front, you know, <laughs> like the gospel music yeah. is pretty fire. Yeah. The gospel music is pretty fire. And, and so much of it is, is, has been incorporated into popular music. What are your thoughts on Kanye? I think Kanye West is a genius. Did you like his Christian album? Yeah, I like all of his albums. Yeah. Yeah. And being a Jewish man, you uh Ultra Light Beam. Yeah. Did that did, This is did, a God dream. Did that this stuff ever God make dream. you think like, I'm not gonna listen to this music anymore? No. No, 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 no. You no. told me you separate the artists. You could from, feel the, look, like I'm a huge Kanye fan. I'm like, he's my favorite artist, and I always think everything he does is right. I think what he did to Taylor Swift, I think he was right. Unpopular opinion, cancel me. <laughs> Beyonce's video was better. <laughs> You know, yeah, man. Uh, and he <laughs> went up there and he stuck up for his homeboy's girl, and I thought that was dope. The anti-Semitism, of course, that was bad. But I think now this is another while. Uh, this is a hot take. Mm. I think he was just trying to get out of that Adidas contract. He said in his new album, in one of the songs, he's like, "It cost me eight billion to get out of my chains," mm. you know, or something like that. You know he's nuts, yeah, but it's fun. It's like funny to me. I he's think a, he, he's a genius. He, I, I'm know, not I'm kidding about the Taylor Swift stuff. I don't know about all his. his <laughs> he made a famous his stuff sorry, and his personal stuff, but I'm a professional musician, and uh, I I'm very comfortable calling him a musical genius. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Bonafide. Yeah, nice. To and hear. I've pro I've seen him in concert eight or nine times. Yeah, like since his first album to now. And I've met him several times and he's always been exceedingly kind to me. Really? Yeah. And even before my career started, I met him and he was incredibly kind. Yeah. So I have nothing bad to say about Kanye West. Only good things. No, I feel like Kanye is just 10 steps ahead, sort of calculated in his moves. I think everybody just, like you see somebody that's a little insane stuff that's a little out there that you don't, don't really hear before. Like sometimes I'll watch your videos and I'm like, did this guy fucking go nuts or something? <laughs> but then I listen more into it and I'm like, no, he's actually, you know, this is wisdom. This is real stuff. Mm. You know, this guy is really intelligent. Thank you. And you're just on another level of, of like the life you've lived to get here and all everything you've experienced, the way you look at life. I think Kanye, I, I don't know. I just, may, that's probably going to get me in trouble saying that, but you know, and then afterwards he said he he uh, he watched Twenty One Jump Street and he <laughs> likes Jewish people uh, now because of Jonah Hill was funny in it. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, uh, but no anti-Semitism. But also Kanye is a genius. Yeah, for sure. No anti-Semitism. Yeah. All love. Yeah, love is the answer, man. Love yeah. is the answer. Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? Define aliens. Like, is there other life outside not on this planet? I think there probably is. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I meet some people in LA who think like some percentage of the 
human population as it exists are aliens. I don't believe that at all. I've seen two UFOs. When I say UFOs- You've seen them personally? I've seen, um, when I say UFOs, I don't mean I've seen saucers. That's very distracting. Was it like the, t- <laughs> was it like the Tic Tac thing? They just look kind of like, one time I saw, I'll tell you exactly what I saw. I saw, basically it looked like I was in the desert and I was sober. Um, was this on the walk? No, I was driving to my buddy's house and I saw this thing like out the window and they just looked like it was a beautiful starry night and they just looked like the exact, they looked exactly like stars, but they were in a row, seven of them and perfectly spaced. Same yeah. brightness as a star, same size as a star. If you weren't looking, it just looked like stars, but they were equidistant from one another, perfect. And they were moving across the sky. So I don't know what that was. I, I, I know there's an army base or I think an air force base near there could have been some they were doing. So when I say UFO, I mean UFO, like unid- I can't identify yeah. it, unidentified. There's been similar sightings, sorry over here, similar sightings that have been proven to be uh, actually satellites going around the earth. Yeah, so it could have yeah. been satellites, like seven of them. So I don't know. When I yeah, say like UFO, that, I use that word. Remember that Chinese spy purposely. balloon that was going around? We all thought that was aliens. Yeah. What was the second time? The America second time shot I saw it down. yesterday. I wish I took a video. Uh, you saw a UFO yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Now, see, this is where I start thinking you're nuts again. No, I'm not nuts. <laughs> like, did he go off the deep end? No, no, so I saw this, like, this thing. Uh, you know how it went plant, there's those planes that leave the I saw smoke? this. You saw yeah, last it was night? like a sperm in the sky. Oh, yeah. That I saw like, it driving home from Vegas that, last night. It, uh, was planes, s- wait. Sorry. Let me say more. Don't no ruin it. Let me say more. Let me say more. Was it SpaceX? It was SpaceX rocket. Yeah. It, was Did, space. it took off from here? Yeah. It took off from oh, LA. It, but it looked like it took off from like right here. Yeah. yeah. It was really close. And Got it. Where, yeah. okay, where did it take off from? Texas. Oh, I think. Yeah. 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 I saw the thing flying. I'm like, this doesn't look like a plane. And it was moving and I could see the tail from the smoke and it was like really yeah. curly. But then the tail from the smoke, it looked like it Way took off. Way too much smoke. It looked like it took off from like here here like a mile from here yeah but that was probably just how it how it looked, how it looked so yeah. all, all those things i've seen things i didn't know what they were that's what i mean yeah i don't i didn't think they were like they were you know little green dudes. i told her film this shit we're this is, we're seeing aliens we're gonna be the first to get footage of aliens i had her filming <laughs> yeah. the thing it was just i was like man another satellite going up is. in there i'm going to bed though whatever Fuck at least i'll have better wi-fi you know <laughs> yeah what yeah was for starlink it was for starlink yeah damn what besides the rattlesnake was there any like what was the scariest thing you saw on the walk because that's a lot of time alone right scariest thing i saw a lot of times i would feel fear you know is my own judgment i would walk in these rural areas to be confederate flags a lot it's like small towns were like i was just scared people were gonna be mad at me and a couple times they were but mostly people were just they just gave me so much love you know does forrest gump hit like harder now <laughs> i actually haven't watched it since you haven't watched it since you should yeah i probably should huh <laughs> i i think i i think i'm hesitant to because you might I, want to go back out again right after i wouldn't want the the memory of the movie to to layer over my actual memories and like confusion it's just a quick ways. part of the movie where he you're goes right. nuts and grows <laughs> yeah, a long beard right. you did that you went you grew a long beard yeah, long hair a couple times i wish i was the one to shave that <laughs> <laughs> I think I DM'd you about it. I was like, yo, when you cut the hair. Oh, and, yeah. man. I should have called you. Yeah, that's all good. Sure. Was it's it pretty good. boring until you got to like the West? It was never boring. No? It was never boring. You um, wanted, did you ever want to give up? Oh, yeah. Um, I, so let me, Before let me this clarify. Week, or I didn't want to give up. I thought I wasn't going to make it. And I was really scared. Why? Joints hurting? Like, it was unth- unthinkable pain, man. Unthinkable pain. You wake up in the morning. And it's hard to stand up. Were you camping? Some of the time. And other times we had a, a RV hmm. that would go ahead of me and I would sleep in that. And, and you were staying hydrated, like electrolytes and stuff, taking things? To the best of your ability, you know? When you start getting in the middle of nowhere, it's not like you have your... Yeah, that's why... Pick your... You know, you're, you're not going to Air One anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it hurt. It was supposed. It's supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to feel good. Yeah, you know, you do, you you choose to do something like that. It's it's gonna really it really hurt physically. And what was tough mentally was it was it was unclear whether the damage I was doing was gonna be permanent or not. That's something where your mind starts fucking with you and mind telling you like you. you need to stop doing That's this. Right. And then you're feeling a little like 
that little laziness gets in there too. Like, I want to stop doing this. And your brain's like, this is bad for you. You need to stop. Yeah. That's yeah. hard to push through. Yeah. So what got you to push through that? Did you put on a David Goggins podcast or something? <laughs> I listen to Goggins a lot. I love Goggins, man. Yeah. He, he, he's, he, I wouldn't want to hang out with him, but I, I love listening to some of his stuff. I think stuff. you'd love him. I talked to him once. Yeah. And uh, he was laughing and smiling. Yeah. You know, and I would yeah, run with him. I, I'd mode. fucking run until we would get in a competition. I'm very competitive. So I would run until somebody dies with him <laughs> <laughs> or to do a pull-up contest until our arms rip off. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. Did you have a favorite uh, part? Navajo Nation. Yeah. Yeah, Navajo Nation. Arizona. It was a place that people warned me about, you know, I said, be careful going there, you know, bad things happen on the on the reservation, all this stuff. And I got there and I was just ensconced and overwhelmed with love and support from the Diné people. And you gotta understand when you go in the Navajo Nation, the US government considers that part of America, but the but the Diné people who live there consider that a sovereign territory. So you're in another country. Mm -hmm. You're in another country. There's no reason they need to be nice to me. Yeah, I'm a white guy walking across the land that they've been sequestered to by mm -hmm. white people. Your ancestors slaughtered their ancestors. Yeah, well, not mine. Mine were Jewish people getting slaughtered by other okay, people. Okay, mine. I'm sure. I'm sure mine. Yours? Have no, no. Actually, I'm, I'm sure mine. I'm Italian. Have, I'm sure mine have done some <laughs> some slaughtering. Actually, is that uh, right? wasn't Christopher Columbus. No, he was no. Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Italians um, weren't killing Indians, but nonetheless, yeah, they were killing. I like, they were whacking people in the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, uh, I like I. I uh, I enjoy some of the benefits that came from, from said genocide. So there was no, there's no reason for them to be, and I'm a stranger. Mm -hmm. Despite all that, it was the most love that I received on the entire journey. Almost to a point where I couldn't, I couldn't like get my miles done because every few steps, someone's pulling to the side of the road, praying for me, giving me eagle feather. It was just a very high honor and there society and it was just i can't explain the depth you probably got a lot of love because you're like i'm walking across america and they're like oh he's getting in touch with like the earth nature right now maybe could be something right like maybe that's why they're like so accepting because like if you were just a random guy from like the city that was like hey just walking in they'd probably be like what are you doing here instead of just like you were on a journey and that yeah like they were familiar they with, the, with the context of my my journey yeah i think so i told you i saw you one time walking with a backpack on just like by the grove driving that was probably when i was getting ready yeah yeah i was in la and i was like oh, i start walking a little bit before Damn. I yeah you're just walking around i yeah. said what's up to you you said what's up yeah man yeah before we wrap up mount everest it's like sixty thousand dollars to do it right because now i have to depending. do it depending you can go you can go cheap skate you know, I, you wanna, can, yeah, you can, I think, the, no training I think like the permit itself on the Nepal side, gosh, don't quote me, 15, 20, I think maybe 15 grand. Really? Permit. So that's like, you have to get that from the government. Fucking to, to be all, but, that's, that's but a real could, white person thing to do. Uh, go could, drop 15 grand on a permit to hike Mount Everest. You could go raw dog and like, I'm not sure what it is on the Tibetan side. So Everest is on the border yeah so half of it is in tibet which is controlled by china yeah and half of it is in nepal so i'm i'm t i climbed in nepal because it was covid and i don't even know what's going on with the chinese side yeah. if it's open imagine they, having they a, wear a, a mask uh, on, <laughs> while you're hiking up mount everest and they're like put your mask on like, no, I can't, in china. can't fucking breathe <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh so so the permit is that much and then you know you can you could try to climb it just like by yourself. Like did you have oxygen did with 50s. you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. you need to, right? I mean, I, I think never... Wim Hof could probably do it, no oxygen. It gets too thin up there. The air um, gets too thin. Not for Wim Hof. True. I mean, if he, I mean, an immense amount of training. So the difference between climbing Everest with oxygen versus no oxygen is sort of like, how do I put it? Like being like a really good college player versus being Kobe Bryant. Mm. Like you're not- it's like steroids. With, you're not, no, like to, I mean the other way, like to, to, to achieve Everest with no oxygen, you need to be the real deal. You need to be, oh, okay. you need to be a, the real. So like 
I would say that's something I could do because I think we could be do or have anything. But I need to train about five more years to even think about that. Oh, you did it. You got it. You, you got yeah. it done. You don't need well, it's to not do my it goal. It's not yeah. my goal. I don't I don't really care about doing it with no O's. But so, no O's is is serious. Like the year I went, no one did no O's. No O's, like you it has to be the perfect weather because you're when you have no O's, you're colder. Mm-hmm. And it has to be the perfect day. You can't be behind people in a line because you're colder. And so the year I went, um, I think something like 500 people made the summit, 400, 500 people made the summit and zero of them did no O's. And there was a bunch of people there trying to do no O's and none of them were successful. They all folded? I want to say folded because mountains, look, and this, if you choose to go this route, this this will be the hardest part for you because you're such a competitor. Mountains are not like marathons or basketball or any other sport because in those sports, leaving it all on the court is the right thing to do. Like give it your all. Mm-hmm. In mountains, there are times where giving it your all kills you. And dying on the mountain is not success. Mm-hmm. Success is making the summit and coming home. Yeah. It's not just making the summit. At least for us and my team and my coach, that's how we roll. Mm-hmm. If you choose to not go for the summit, and there are plenty of times where that is the right decision, where the weather's wrong, where the day is wrong, where something's wrong with your body, where you're not feeling right. The mountain doesn't go anywhere and you can go try again. Well, that's all right. I'll have if oxygen. You Kyle, that, you could carry the oxygen. No, I'm saying even if you have oxygen. Because <laughs> he's got to be filming. Yeah. He's got to film it. If so. you fuck that decision up, you can't try again. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do it. With so that, this with is how, the, this I would is, do it the right way. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying, but that's a, it's a mind adjustment. Because mm-hmm. I'm the same way or competitive. Yeah. The mounds are different where sometimes you win by not summiting. Oh, hey, I made the right call. And you watch other people go up. That happened to us. We're looking at weather and base camp. People are going up and they're not, not coming back. They just die up there they and die. just they, freeze they under die. the snow. Bodies just... Die, they die or they go up and they get frostbite. They come back and they lose fingers. That's not success. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, this, this, <laughs> On that no, note. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this was great. I, I know you have a lot of things to do. No, it's all good. So you have a new album out, right? Not yet. It's, it's on not its out way. yet. No, oh, not when yet. When does it come out? Next couple months. I don't have a hard date yet. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Soon. Are you perfectionist? Like you're going to sit there with it and keep on trying to make it more perfect, perfect as no, possible? It'll, it'll, I mean, yeah. To it, as, as, Why don't you just drop it now? Oh, it's just uh, finishing the record deal and oh, okay. uh, that kind of stuff. It's getting mixed and mastered yeah. and stuff. Business yeah. stuff. Like you got to go in those offices with the tables. It's all good, man. Uh, it's part of the art. Part is of the art. Jay-Z an Illuminati? I don't really believe in Illuminati. Yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. somebody in Illuminati would probably say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. On that note. Do, you think, do I was, give you Illuminati no, vibes? No, no, I'm kidding. I'm fucking He didn't around. give me Illuminati vibes. Bring in the guy's pocket. Somebody vibe dump, check. dump the yeah. ice on him. No, this is great. This is one of my favorite podcasts I've done. Thank you, Mike. This Listen, is, bro. This it, was, really it was a real pleasure. And Check it, out his podcast. Um... Mike Posner podcast. That's, That's it. That easy. I yeah. love you guys. You guys. Love you too. Love you guys. God bless you. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> that was great. Damn, that is a I'm happy yeah. we did the exercise. That was like, beautiful, right? People get to do it.